Yo, what is good everybody? I'm your boy Chidiro, and this is my leveling guide for Barbarian in Season 3. Let's get it. Now the first thing I want to talk about here are the general aspects that you're going to want to take to speed up the leveling process in Season 3. Now that's not to say that you need these aspects, but they definitely help with the leveling process. And the first aspect I want to talk about today is Aspect of the Sundered Ground. This plays around our core ability, Upheaval. And what this does is it guarantees overpower damage on Upheaval every 25 seconds. And it also increases the damage of Upheaval by 10%. And the easiest way to acquire Aspect of the Sundered Ground is by doing your first chapter of your Seasonal Objectives. So this will be relatively easy to acquire. And we're going to imprint the Aspect of the Sundered Ground onto our necklace. And the second Aspect that you're going to want for this build is Aspect of Echoing Fury. And what Aspect of the Echoing Fury is going to do, it's going to help us with our resource management. So every time that we have a Shout active, we gain additional Fury. And with additional Fury being gained, we're going to be able to pump out a lot of upheavals. And we're going to imprint the Aspect of Echoing Fury on our ring piece. And the dungeon that you get Echoing Fury from is the Sirocco Caverns, which is located in the Kedjistan part of the map. Now another aspect you might want to find is the one that buffs your charge so that it summons four Ancients. This will definitely help with the damage output of the build, but if you can't find it, it's all good. And last but not least, it's one that you don't need right away but you will need later in the game is Aspect of Disobedience. This basically gives you armor when you do any form of damage. So it will help provide damage reduction to increase your survivability. And you can find this in the Halls of the Damned in Ketchstan. Alright guys, that does it for all the aspects that you're probably going to want in your leveling journey for Season 3. But let's move on to the primary and secondary skill path next. Okay, so here we are. I refunded all my talent points. And now I'm going to show you all the way from level 1 to 50, the exact skill pathway. So first, let's go 1 to Lunging Strike, and then 1 into Enhanced Lunging Strike. Now that's going to bring us down to our second bracket. We're going to put one into Upheaval, and then one into Enhanced Upheaval. Next, we're going to put one into Furious Upheaval, and then one all the way into Battle Lunging Strike. So that brings us down to our third bracket, and we're going to do one into Rallying Cry, Enhanced Rallying Cry, and Tactical Rallying Cry. And the reason we spent the points that way for Rallying Cry is because it gives us Unstoppable, which will free us from any form of CC. And Rallying Cry now will also help us with our resource management by giving us extra fury. And now we're going to go back up to our core skill upheaval and dump another two points in there. And now we've made it down to our brawler skills and right away we're going to go for the new and improved charge. And then we're going to put one into enhanced charge. And then one into power charge. So now outside of the fact that we got a huge buff to charge, we're going to be able to potentially stun enemies and reduce the cooldown of charge simultaneously. So now we have two more points, and you're going to want to dump those last two points into Upheaval. Which will bring us down to our Weapon Mastery Bracket. However, we're not going to put any points into this bracket. We're going to put those points into Warcry, Enhanced Warcry, and Power Warcry. And now with the way that we invested our points into Warcry, every time we pop Warcry, we're going to get a significant damage buff. And now that we have four more skill points before we get to the next bracket, we're going to dump them all into Charge. Perfect. So now Charge is going to do Nutty Damage. Now we're down to our ultimate skill bracket, but again we're spending no points in this bracket. So now this is where the build could have a little bit of flexibility on what you think caters to your playstyle. If you want mobility, I suggest you go Leap. If you want a little bit more survivability in your build, you can go Challenging Shout. And if you want your build to have a little bit more CC, you can go Ground Stomp. The choice is really up to you, but for today's build, I'm going to go Leap. I like the mobility and I want to get to level 50 as fast as possible. That's where my head's at. So I'm going to put one point into Leap, one point into Enhanced Leap, and then one point into Power Leap. Now Leap has a faster cooldown and it also generates 40 Fury if I hit one enemy. So now I have uptime on my mobility and I also have resource regeneration. Now after Leap, we're going to invest into our secondary skill points and we're going to start off with Heavy Handed. We're going to put a full 3 into Heavy Handed. Heavy Handed gives us a 15% Critical Strike Damage Multiplier when using two-handed weapons. Dope. And then we're going to put a full 3 into Brute Force. Which gives us 24% Multiplicative Overpower Damage when using a two-handed weapon. Now we're going to spend that last point before we get into our key passive in Pit Fighter. So Pit Fighter gives us increased damage to close enemies, which will be in 100% of the time. And it also reduces damage from distant enemies. Now for our key passive, we're going Unbridled Rage. What Unbridled Rage does is it gives us 135% damage multiplier to our core ability, Upheaval. That's crazy. However, it costs 100% more Fury. But don't worry about that, we got a lot of resource regeneration. Now after we select our key passive, we're going to dump another 2 points into Pit Fighter. 
And then we're going to dump a full 3 into Slaying Strike. This will give us a damage multiplier to injured enemies. Injured enemies are enemies below 35% of health. Next, I want to go all the way back up to our core skills category and dump a full 3 into Endless Fury. So whenever we're using two-handed weapons, our Lunging Strike will regenerate Fury for us. Next, we're going to dump a full 3 into Pressure Point. And our core skill upheaval, which hits in a cone form, gives us a 30% damage to apply vulnerable for 2 seconds. Huge. Now we're going to come back down to our brawling skills and we're going to dump a full 3 into booming voice. This will increase the duration of all our shouts, so that will be rallying cry and war cry. Then we're going to dump a full 3 into swiftness, which will give us extra mobility. Then we're going to dump 1 into thick skin just to give us a little bit of survivability late into world tier 2. Then we're going to drop a full 3 into Defensive Stance to increase our survivability. And a full 3 into Counter Offensive to give us a little bit more damage. And there you have it everyone, that's the full primary and secondary skill path all the way to level 50. So with that out the way, let's go to our Expertise next. Now for Expertise, I would highly suggest either going 2-handed Axe Expertise or 2-handed Sword Expertise. Early on in World Tier 2, 2-handed Sword Expertise is going to feel real good and do a lot of damage. However, I'd suggest later into World Tier 2, you start going two-handed axe expertise. So that does it for expertise. Let's move on to the Season 3 mechanic, the Seneschal, next. So for the Seneschal stones, guys, I really don't see the point or purpose of them until you start leveling them up. The only one that really helped me was Reconstruct. Reconstruct will heal you passively whether you're in or out of combat, which is kind of nice that you don't have to think about popping a potion all the time. Other than that, these stones really don't start doing much until you start leveling them up past the rank of 5. And I'm just straight up honest, I really don't think these stones come into effect until you get them to rank 10. At rank 10, I think you'll start seeing a difference. Alright guys, so we covered the aspects, primary and secondary skills, the expertise for the Barbarian and the Seneschal. But next, I want to show you guys the best spots where you can farm XP. So the first spot I want to show you guys is the Dohamine Tunnels or the Dopamine Tunnels. I call it the Dope Tunnels. This is a great spot to level up and get XP quick. And this dungeon is located in Scots Glen. I'll show you guys a demonstration of this XP farm in just a little bit. And the next best XP farm is surprisingly the Seasonal Objectives. What's cool about doing the Seasonal Objective is you could also do the Tree of Whispers and double up on the experience gain. What I'll show you guys later is a demonstration of the amount of enemies that are in these areas where the Seasonal Objectives are. So the best two ways to level up very quickly is the Dope Tunnels, the first room only which I'll demonstrate later and the seasonal objective, especially the ones that reward Grim Favors. That way you're getting two birds with one stone, you're getting a ton of experience just from the mobs, and then you're also getting a ton of experience from the Whisper Tree. So with that being said, let me demonstrate some of the mob density in these areas where the seasonal objective is, and show you a little bit of wave clear. Alright, so here we are at the seasonal objective, and for the record, I have no sacred armor on, I'm only level 50, and this is World Tier 3. So as you can see, a pretty dense mob on our left and our right. Let's do this. Going with our charge, right? We're going to keep our leap up just in case it gets a little crazy. Or we just need to get out of there. Throw our people out. Boom, crunch. Again, no sacreds on. All world, world tier 2 stuff. Not too bad. So you'll be able to level up with this build even into world tier 3. Alright guys, so that was the best two ways to do our XP farming. And now I'm going to demonstrate wave clear and single target damage. And of course, we're in the dopamine tunnels, or the dope tunnels, wherever you want to call it, so let's go. And one thing I want to mention here, guys, is I have no sacred armor on. I have all regular world tier 2 armor on. And I haven't put any legendary stones into my center shell. Alright guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rally up everybody, get a nice pack going here. We're going to chart off with the charge here. Boom, crushed. Upheaval, done. Do our shouts, keep us up. Charge back up, boom be fun this is gonna be a fun build man you guys are gonna enjoy leveling the 150 150 level 50 <laughs> 150 would be nuts they should do that though in outer world tier 5 upheaval boom look at that damage boys boom that charge is crazy this build is so much fun wow here we go charge see you later upheaval boom leap out Perfect. 
All right, so that's basically what you're gonna do every single time. Is you're gonna clear this first room, then click on the steps, then go over here. Once you're outside the dungeon and reset the dungeon, rinse, repeat, XP farming. All right, guys, next is the boss fight, and I'm gonna demonstrate some single target damage. Not you. So we're gonna wait this for upheaval to tick up to 25, but as you can see, we're doing pretty decent damage. Even with charge. As you can see, it's counting up. We could drop some upheavals though. It's definitely not like a rogue. And we're almost there. Not bad, not bad. Alright guys, that does it for wave clear and that pitiful single target damage. Let's move on to the build summary next. So for aspects, we're going aspect of the Sundered Ground, which you can get from your seasonal journey in chapter 1. And we're also going to go the aspect of Echoing Fury to give our shouts resource regeneration. For our primary skills, we're going to go Lunging Strike, Upheaval, then we're going to get Rallying Cry, War Cry, Charge, and Leap. And for expertise, we're going to go two-handed axe expertise, or we can go two-handed sword expertise. Up to you. As for the Seneschal guys, go whatever you want. I really think the one that heals you is the best one to go. Best places to farm is the dope tunnels, or the seasonal objectives, especially the ones that reward grim favors. Well, that does it for my barbarian leveling guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. The word on the road is that season three isn't doing too well and a lot of people aren't receptive to it. And I understand that people are frustrated, but you know what? You can still have fun with the game regardless. Just try and take it for what it's worth. It probably won't be ready till season four or five. So let's hope by then they get together. But I'm gonna level up my Barbarian regardless. I wanna get one character to level 100 for this season and I'll be bringing you guys more Barbarian build guides next. And guys, don't worry about liking and subscribing. If you enjoyed today's video, brought you any kind of value, that's all I ever wanna do. So thank you so much for watching. Well, that does it for me. I'm your boy, Jadiro. Sign up for now. Peace.